Welcome, everybody. My name is Justin. For those of you who don't know me, I'm one of the product experts here at ArcSight, handle a lot of our partnerships, things like that. But today I'm going to be spending time with you guys teaching you how to create your first fence drawing and estimate. Now, it looks like some of the people here, just based on emails and stuff, may not be professional fencers, but a lot of the drawing training will be applicable to more than just fence. The products I'll just be using and things today will be focused around fence. So if you're here and you're not fence, you don't have to leave. You're not in the wrong room. You can still pick up things and learn. But if you are a fencer and you're here, um, looks like there's a few of you, then absolutely you'll you'll probably get more out of it than most. But we'll continue these series by doing ones for different industries as time goes on. So feel free to look for future invites if there's a specific industry you're trying to dive deeper into than just kind of a generic overview. So today we're going to spend you know, 20, 25-ish minutes in, in the tool itself going through and learning how to use it and how to function and all that sort of fun stuff. But at the end, I'll leave some time for Q&A. And, and at any time, you can hit the chat box on the side um, and we have people responding to those in real time. If it's something you ask that's applicable to the large group, I will make sure I try to address it publicly today. If it's something that's very specific or industry specific that isn't what's being covered, we may sidebar that and send you a follow-up via email or something after just to make sure that we are using our time wisely today to cover what people need to get covered. So hopefully that helps. Um, without further ado, I'm just going to share up my iPad screen really quickly here so you guys can see everything I do do today will be on my iPad just right in front of me. You know, nothing fancy. You'll be seeing everything live, nothing pre-recorded, any of that sort of fun stuff. Do, do, do. So we'll share that up. All right, and it looks like you guys should be able to see this now. You'll see create project training, a couple sample projects. Now, this screen is what you see when you start a new account in ArcSight. You're going to get some sample projects. You're going to see samples, which are just full of different sample drawings and things like that. But then I've just created a folder called training. The reason that I did that is I wanted to go through and pre-fill in the customer data just so that you guys didn't have to watch me type a bunch of blanks in during today's training. So that way you guys will see everything come out on the proposal the way it would is if, if it were for a real customer. So we're gonna go through and we're just gonna tap on our training folder. If you didn't have a folder, you'd hit create project, fill one out. Not gonna spend a ton of time there because we wanna spend more time in app. And then we're gonna hit create drawing. So when we hit create drawing, you can name it whatever you want to. In this case, we're just gonna name it Homer's Fence and we're gonna go through and draw out a fence for Homer today. Now, when you hit your canvas, you can scale it to any amount you need to. So I'll, go, I'll do kind of a quick overview of all the tools and things that you're seeing on the screen, and then I'll show you how to actually use them kind of one by one. So to scale the screen, first you can set your units in precision to whatever it needs to be set to. So if you're in, let's say the fencing world and you tap on these units in precision, you're probably always going to work in feet as far as your unit of drawing measurement. I like to draw down to a half an inch precision. You can get more precise if you need to. Maybe you need to go to all the way down to say an eighth or a sixteenth or whatever you need to go down to precision wise. You can have ArcSight draw and calculate to that level of precision. But for today's drawing, we're just going to use half an inch because that's usually precise enough for a fence installation. Certain industries obviously need to be more precise, but fencing half an inch usually seems to do the trick. So now that I've done that, you're going to see a bunch of tools on the right side of the toolbar. So the right side of the screen, those buttons when you tap them will affect what you're going to do next. When you're doing certain things within the canvas that you're gonna see in a minute, there'll be there will actually be a toolbar on the left side of the screen as well that will appear when you're doing certain things, but we'll cross that when we get there. It's just if you're seeing a left side toolbar on yours, don't freak out. It's just something that pops up. You may have something already drawn. So if I go through and I wanna draw out say, a six foot vinyl fence for a customer. There's two ways to do it. Now, the way I'm gonna show you first is the most popular way that we see because in this industry and in a lot of industries, providing a good, better, best or being able to change the fence style to a different fence style is something that's relatively important to folks. And maybe you know, Mrs. Jones wants to know a quote for six foot white vinyl, but then she also wants to compare it to wood or chain link or aluminum or all these different styles of fence that she could be getting. So what I'll show you first is the most popular way to do that, to make that the easiest workflow. But if you're not providing a good, better, best, you can actually skip the first few steps, but I'll show you what I mean by that. So what I'm first start up by doing is drawing out a house and you can draw it out as detailed as you want. You can tap on this tap on wall because a wall of a house gives it kind of that thickness, that really nice look to it. And you can draw it either in line segments just by hitting line arc right here or continuous lines. Now the difference is continuous lines, as long as you keep your finger on the screen, you can continue to draw. 
So you can draw just as if it were like pencil on paper. You can draw all your line segments in one go. If it's line arc, you draw, and then that line is all you draw. You have to pick up, stop, go again to be able to continue. Depending on how precise you need to be, that should be what tool you're going to use. You need to be super precise on every single measurement. For the actual fence, you'd probably use line arc, but for the house, usually that's just a representation showing the client where their house is located, and it, the actual measurements of the house are not all that important. So if we do that, the next piece you're going to do is you're going to draw in the fence itself. So we're just going to pretend that this is our house, and then we're going to go to draw, and I'm going to change my line to you know a normalish color because I have it on tan for some reason. I think I was drawing a deck or something, who knows. But then you can go in and you can draw around just normal lines. Now, it's important to know that these lines are just lines. There's no products associated with them. There's no data associated with them at this point. We're going to associate that data later. But there's a reason I'm not associating data to it now, and I'll show you what that is. So if I'm going to go in and I'm going to draw out, you know, my fence itself, maybe I'm going to draw a 22-foot section over here. When you draw a line, dimensions are going to pop up, and it's going to tell you how long the line is that you drew. You can change that by simply tapping on the number and entering the numbers like I'm doing now. So if I tap on that 20 feet, three and a half inches and enter in 22, the line's going to grow to that size. And it's always going to stay to scale. So you don't have to worry about dragging super carefully. Like if I know I have to run back 48 feet now, I can simply draw any size line I want, tap on that number, type in 48, and it will grow to that size. So you don't have to drag really carefully and try to stop. Simply enter the number. It'll save you a lot of time. We'll go through and we'll finish off, you know, what, what a reasonable backyard residential fence will be. We do do residential, industrial, commercial, everything within, within app, but for today we're focusing residential. Commercial, everything workflow is very similar. You just may be working off of blueprints or plans or things you've imported into ArcSight versus starting with a blank canvas is all. So something else important to note. So if you go through and you draw those pieces out, what you're going to do next is kind of it looks like a step back, but it's not. So we're gonna go back into the actual folder itself. We're going to select this drawing right here and we're going to duplicate it. The reason that you're going to want to duplicate the drawing into the same folder is so you can do multiple fences all at the same time because we do have good, better, best presentation mode built in that's going to allow you to display them side by side for comparison reasons. Now, this is the only step necessary, or this step is only necessary if you're doing a good, better, best or providing multiple options. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate that drawing. On the top right, you'll just hit done when you're done. And now I have two of the exact same drawing. Now, the reason I did that is then I can go back into here. I can select my fence lines. Now, there's two different types of selects. The first one is box select. Box select allows you to draw a box over the sections that you want to select and then apply things to. The thing with box select is it's not as precise. It's only going to select the line if you're going left to right when you fully encompass it. So like this full west run over here isn't going to actually be selected until I fully encompass the run. Now, it's a challenge because if I try to get all this, I'm going to get the back of the house too. And I don't want to add fence to the back of the house, right? So I like the free select tool. It allows you to simply draw lines and whatever you cross over with your finger, it will select. So you can kind of see the little scribble down in the bottom left. That's just showing you where I'm touching my finger. If I go up and I start crossing over all these lines, I'm going to select just the fence runs that way. And then on the left, you hit attributes. So you see how the left toolbar appeared now? The left toolbar is showing that you're making modifications to an already pre-existing object. The right toolbar is how you add objects and create new things. The left toolbar is how you modify existing things. So that's what I was saying earlier. There's actually two. They just, they appear at different times. So right now, if I were to hit attributes, and I can then add a product to that line. So I can go in here and hit add product, and maybe I can choose you know, wood privacy fence, western red cedar, six foot, right? I can tap on that. It immediately throws in all the parts and pieces that are needed to, ac to accomplish that job. It'll tell you all your parts, your takeoff, the amount of concrete you need, all that sort of fun stuff. Then I can hit save and close. Now, if I go back and I want to do that to the second drawing, and I go in here and do the same thing, maybe I want to add, you know, vinyl fence or a completely different type of fence to that project. So I'll go down and grab... Let's see, um, a six foot vinyl privacy fence in white. Very common fence, you guys probably all install it. And it's probably one of your more popular ones if you do vinyl in your area. You may just do wood, chain link, aluminum. Doesn't make a difference. They all kind of work the same way. 
And then it'll show you, you know, how many different sections, 29 sections of fence. It's priced out by the section in this instance. You can do it by the foot or by the section or by really anything. You just have to be able to tell ArcSight how you price it, and then it can handle it from there. And then hit save and close. And now it has applied those products to both of the drawings. So you've really created two different style of fence drawings in just a matter of seconds by going back and forth and selecting the pieces where the fence goes. Next, you're going to want to go in and add your gates. So under products, you can go through and capture whatever you want to capture. So in this case, I'm just going to search for gates and it's going to pop up my vinyl gates privacy. So maybe if I want to add, you know, a six foot or double gate on one side and then just a standard four foot white gate on the other side, I just simply drag and drop those around. So I kind of went fast over that piece. So let me show you how kind of shapes and objects work within the canvas. This works the same way for products and for shapes. So if you were to tap on any sort of a shape, like the shape of this gate, it just drops it into the canvas somewhere where there's space for it, really. And you simply just take it and place it where you want to place it. Now, as you move it, you see all these green dimensions. It shows you relative dimensions to how far you are from other objects. So if you're trying to get, you know, a specific space off the corner, like maybe you want to install this gate, um, you know, 10 feet off of the house. You can yet again tap on this tiny little green dimension, change that to 10 feet and the gate will move 10 feet off of the house exactly. So your drawing can be 100% precise and you can be placing things exactly where you wanna place things. Now, when you're done with that portion of it, yet again, I would go back and select the lines of the fence that you wanna add. And then you can hit add dimensions on the left and it'll throw dimensions on your drawing so you know how long each of your runs are. If you don't wanna throw dimensions on your drawing, you don't need to. ArcSight will already tell you how many sections and all the different pieces and things, but sometimes people like the visual aid or for their production crew to be able to look and see how everything looks and how everything works. So you can drop it into there. Now, the reason that I did two at the same time was so I could do like a good, better, best. I'm gonna move forward with just one right now, and then I'll go back and show you kind of how the good, better, best portion works. So I've drawn out, you know, basic fence pieces. So I've drawn in a line using the continuous tool. I use the simple line tool just to draw in the fence runs themselves. It was a very simple straight fence. You can, however, if you're drawing a pool fence or something, you can draw arcs with the exact same tool just by dragging your finger. Those gray shadow lines are just showing you where my finger is. Um, so if you, you can draw arcs and curves and areas and all these different things to be able to complete, you know, whatever style you know, fence you're trying to draw. So if you're trying to draw, you know, a curved arced area, you can go in and adjust things and make things really smooth and pretty and draw and whatever you want with an arc site, it will still measure the amount of pieces and parts you need. You'll see that a lot more in pool fence or certain HOA work or around landscaping, like aluminum, you'll draw a lot more curved lines and stuff with. So you'll run into that sort of stuff. But as far as the demonstration today, we're not going to spend too much time on how to draw and make things all super pretty. A lot of that's just going to come with muscle memory and practice. Now I drew in some, some products onto here. And this is a very simple sample account that just has generic stuff in it. It's not been customized to anybody's specific workflow or needs. All these different things are, can be color coded and changed. So maybe your vinyl fence is always going to be purple. You can go in and change it to purple so that way it shows up purple. You can adjust that so that way it means whatever it means to you. But because of ArcSight already knowing what it is, we have this little legend up here. So this little piece of paper next to the, with a little pencil on it, you can create a legend or access any sort of customized forms you built out within your account. Forms are a whole different thing we're not gonna get into today. But if I hit create legend, it's going to drop in and tell me exactly what each line in each gate represents. So it'll tell you that, hey, this is a six foot wide double gate. That's a four foot wide single gate. This is a six foot privacy vinyl fence in white. So just to make it easier to communicate and stuff with the customer. Now, before we move on to like the estimation part, we're gonna spend quite a bit more time in the drawing piece because so far all we've done is draw lines. We use the wall tool to draw the house and we use the draw tool to draw the fence itself. Next is going to be on the toolbar on the right. If we just keep working our way down, you're gonna see openings. Openings are doors, windows, things that break walls essentially, stuff that needs to have an opening to it. So if I drop in like a bypass door, which is another word for a sliding door, I can snap that, it'll grab to the wall, same dimension stuff comes up. This is just if you want to go that extra mile in fencing, we see it here or there, depends on the, you know, you guys' personal opinion and preference. You can finish off a drawing with as much detail and stuff as you like. Doors, windows, garage doors, you know, however you want to go through and make a drawing look, you absolutely can. What I do recommend using, however, is the next piece, shapes. Shapes allows you to go through and grab, 
you know, trees and rocks and gutters and sewers and all these different things that maybe you need to let your production team know that, hey, there's a big tree right over here. It's also a tree over here. Then we'll go back in there and we can go to any different sort of a library of shapes. So you're going to see ArcSight Basic when you start, and then you're going to see your shapes. Now, depending on which shape library that you're using of ours or which type of account. So in this instance, I just used our Fence Wizard to build out the product library. The Fence Wizard allows you to say, I choose or I install this type of galvanized fence, these types of wood, these types of vinyl, and it builds out all the product bundles and stuff for you. There's no more you know, days of manually entering all the different pieces, parts, and components. Allows you to get set up in minutes instead of hours and days and weeks, which is nice. And in full transparency, I set up this entire account I'm using right now within the last 30 minutes. So there's nothing outside of the last 30 minutes that's been created. It was from nothing to this. So you can able to get really far really fast nowadays. And then my shapes are going to be all the specific shapes that you create yourself. We'll get into that again in a minute. And then you can hit get more shapes. Get more shapes allows you to choose from dozens of different libraries of shapes. So if you know, hey, I'm doing all outside stuff, I need landscape shapes. You simply hit add. Now you have a landscape category. With is it still synced in the Wi-Fi with dozens of more shapes that are related specifically to landscape. So if you want to throw in maybe where there's a sewer head or you know a drain area in a client's backyard, that's a huge sewer. So you can drop that in and just place it where it needs to go so that way they're aware of it. And you can do that as much as you want. You could draw out decks and patios and pools and, you know, pool is something that we just mentioned a minute ago. Maybe if you want to go in and grab, you know, a pool library, we have pool as their own library nowadays, which is nice. So you can go in and grab, you know, all sorts of different just pool shapes. And you can go through yet again, grab a pool, you know, whatever pool it is that you want to drop in, drop that in position maybe where your client has a pool for both, you know, just for them to be able to, to like visualize the project, but also for your team to know exactly what they're walking into. So shapes pretty much covered there. Fills you won't use much in fencing. Fill allows you to fill an area with a specific look, color, or pattern. So if you wanted to go in and grab, you know, a solid color, you can drop that into an entire area. You can grab a specific pattern, like maybe you're working on a deck or maybe you're, you know, doing some additional work for somebody in some other way. Like maybe you do fencing, but you're also a general contractor and you want to drop in different pavers and things like that. You could simply just tap on any sort of a pattern itself, tap on any enclosed area and it's going to fill it. Obviously you don't want to fill an entire backyard with one or two paver patterns because that's not going to look very good and it'd be silly, but that's essentially how it works. Just so you guys know. After fill is the measure tool, allows you to measure anything you've drawn. You don't really need to in fencing because it's going to auto add those dimensions for you. But if for some reason you wanted to measure out a certain area, maybe you know you need to do a lot of excavation or grading work on a certain side and you're just curious how large certain chunks of a project are. This is especially useful if you were to have dropped in a blueprint or a plan or a satellite image to start from, because it's going to allow you to take something like this tool, like the polygon tool and draw out any line you want. And it's going to measure you know, any specific area in real time and give you a precise measurement. So ArcSight knows how big everything is. So it allows it to capture that sort of a data. Like I said, you're not going to use it much in fencing or at all, to be honest with you, but I wanted you to know what it was. Next piece you will use. So a call out, like you could say, hey, here's a drain area. That just allows you to drop text and stuff into there with a little arrow is the call out tool. That's the one I see used the most because it allows you to put the text away from the object, but still clearly signify where it came from. Second object is just text itself. So you can tap here and just say, hey, there's a pool. I mean, clearly there's a pool, but that's an example of how the text tool functions. Next piece is huge, huge in fencing, huge in pretty much everything. It's our location-based photo tool. It allows you to simply tap wherever you're standing and take a photo or upload a photo. So if I'm standing at the back corner of this house and I maybe want to notate or show my guys or gals where that drain area is, you can simply tap in the corner. You can take a live photo, or in my case, I'm just going to grab a photo from a photo library because I have, you know, way a lot of things already saved in my iPad. So I can grab that. Looks like a drain area. I can drop it in there. I can go through and I can use those same annotation tools in the same drawing tools right over top of that. So I can say, hey, yeah, you saw in the plan there's a drain, but here's what you're actually going to see. Here's that actual drain that's in that plan. Then you can go back and do that again. You can take as many photos as you want, and then you can give them as much contextual data as you feel like they need. Like maybe they're going to need to move a swing set. And that's something you've already discussed with the homeowner. You guys are okay moving it. Maybe they have to move it. That's all up to your contract, whatever you want to do. And then this is what we're going to have to move, you know? 
et cetera. And a second piece that I didn't show you on the first piece is these little icons can be moved and rotated in any direction. So I was standing right here for that one, took that photo. For this one, I was standing right here and facing this direction. So they know exactly where you were and what you saw. So they have the perfect picture of what they're going to be walking into to do their job. Now, once we've done that, we've added some details and stuff to the drawing. The next piece is going to be getting ready to present the proposal. So when I say getting ready, when you go to the next screen, there's this little piece of paper with a dollar symbol right next door. It says Homer's fence copy. You can simply tap on that and it pulls up your takeoff and estimate screen. That's going to be your bill of materials showing you exactly what pieces and parts are needed to do that job. Now, these are all fencing parts. If you're in any other industry, same principle applies. It literally just shows you everything that's required to complete what you're trying to complete based on what you told ARCSET you were trying to build or do or service. So from here, if you want to change, say, maybe you do vinyl white privacy posts, but for some reason they want a different type of post or they want Postmaster, you're going to switch from concreted post to pounded post. Whatever it is that you want to do, maybe using I-beams now instead of concrete, you can hit this little inputs button in the top left, right above where it says vinyl parts, and that will allow you to edit and switch out all that sort of stuff. If you tap on that, you can switch out, you know, the privacy section white for a completely different style of privacy section. Maybe it has a lattice top or a spindle top. And the same thing with the, the caps themselves. Maybe it's just an internal cap right now, but you want to change it to a ball or a New England. You simply tap it, it'll adjust your bill of materials on the back end and make sure that you have all the right pieces and parts for whatever you're trying to do. And that works its way all the way down. Same thing, change your types of gates, you know, your end posts themselves, you can change the types of posts and things that you have within the bundles. And it just allows you to simply swap out stuff quickly and easily. So you're not constantly adjusting. And yet again, like say for these gates, maybe you want to choose what sort of latch hardware you're going to use. Maybe you're going to use a standard latch here, but on this one, you're going to use, you know, self-closing hinges. It will then adjust stuff in the background. So if you kind of look in the background of where I'm at and I change it, you see how the background image is changing because it's updating the takeoff report with the pieces and parts required to make that change. So you're simply making choices and ArcSight's telling you exactly what you did, but in hardware form. So it'll go down and build all this sort of fun stuff out, right? Now that's gonna be the basic for takeoff to build out you know, what pieces and parts that you need here. I didn't add any labor or anything like that. You can either build those into your bundles where you can go into add other items and you can add manual pieces and parts. You can add labor, you can add tear out, you can add anything that you wouldn't draw would be added through the add other items portion. And then if you go under additional data, you can build out all sorts of question sets. You can build out brochures, warranty information. You can just attach it. In this case, I just took a sample manufacturer warranty and attached it to the account. So if I go to attachments and choose warranty sample, it's now going to include that with my proposal. Same thing with payment. I'm going to go down here. I want payment information on my proposal. In this case, I've set it up so it's a 50-50 split. You know, 50% is due upon signature, 50% is due upon completion. You can edit the deposit field. If you hit use suggested, it's just going to enter that 50% that you have already pre-selected. You can choose that they're paying with cash check, credit financing, whatever it may be. Uh, we do have integrations with financing partners and things that are built in to make it easy to use. But if you have your own, you can simply put it on there. So that way you've clarified that they're using financing. It doesn't have to be one through ArcSight, obviously. Now, once you've done that sort of basic stuff and you've got everything covered that, you know, hey, hey I want to present this. You just simply hit export. It's going to yell at me and tell me my price is too low. The reason I have that is I have a standard margin set for my fence that, hey, my margin needs to be 40% on a project. Otherwise, I'm not bidding it high enough. You know, that's what I've got set in here. I don't have an accurate actual pricing built into this exact account right here or any real pricing. You know, it's standards based on multiple manufacturer libraries kind of averaged together, but it's nothing that you may actually sell and it's missing labor and it's missing that. So it's probably only at like a 20% gross profit because all that is is parts so far. So if I just hit continue, it allows me to bypass that, but it is going to warn you if you're not charging enough for your jobs based on what you've told it. Then you just hit proposal. It then will allow you to go through, choose any sort of different proposal you want. A lot of people will have a customer facing proposal, a crew sheet, a yard sheet, a pull sheet, whatever you want to call it. They'll have multiple outputs, one that's for them, one that's for everybody to see and everybody being your customer. That one usually takes a lot more thought and it's prettier and all that sort of fun stuff. But the crew sheet allows you to get pricing off of there and just tell your team that, hey, when you go to this job, you need, you know, X amount of posts, X amount of rails, X amount of pickets in this many screws and bags of concrete and whatever. So then they can load up the truck, right? 
So then you'll just hit start. It'll run out that and it'll push that out to a proposal. What I did is we have default proposals on our user site that you can start from. I just started from the fence proposal one. Um, and then I just used our default library to be able to generate this exactly what you're seeing today. So it's nothing that's like immensely customized or difficult. I have a lot of customers who have very crazy customized accounts. But for the purpose of today, I wanted to show you kind of what's standard out of the box that you can just sort of function with. So now it went through and it created a proposal. I added my logo just on the user site by just, by just uploading my logo. And then all it did from there is it builds out the rest of the stuff. So it's going to tell them, hey, we propose to install 29 sections of fence, one of those gates, two of those gates um, with one drop rod assembly and one standard latch. You know, that sort of stuff, whatever you're building out and, and quoting out to your customer, those are parts are just all in the bundles. So even though you have that full takeoff list of all your pieces, parts, it's only going to show the customer really what they need to know. They don't need to know that there's 2,100 screws and, you know, 68 bags of concrete. They don't need to know any of that. But at the end of the day, they're still going to know what they're getting and what they're going to pay for it. This can be customized. If you want to itemize it or you're in a trade that needs it itemized, all of this is completely customizable. Just for fence, we've yet to run across anybody who wants to completely itemize their proposals. I'm sure someone exists. So if you're watching and that's you, you can do it. You just, uh, it's not how I figured it would fit most people, which is why I showed it this way. And then it'll go down, it'll show those payment terms and stuff you suggested. It'll go, you go down any further than that. You're going to see the drawing along with like a logo, the client data, what everything means on the proposal. You see now that these little pictures have been assigned numbers. That's because as you go down even further, you know, you're going to work yourself right past the signature lines. And yes, if they want to go ahead and move forward with it, you can capture signature on site. We also have digital acceptance. So that way, if they don't sign on site, you can still send it to them to have them, you know, move forward with the project at a later time. You go down any further, you'll see all your pictures and things to be able to review with the client. Hey, here's what we're doing. Here's what you're going to see. Here's kind of what we're working with and that sort of stuff, right? So it allows you to capture all that sort of stuff in one fell swoop. You can show photos. You cannot show photos yet again, customizable 100% of the way. Go down any further. It's just going to show whatever you attached. So I did like a material and installation warranty, just a sample. Anything you attach, colored brochures, documents, you know, wood warp sheets, whatever it is you want to attach, you absolutely can. And then it will just show up at the end of the proposal. So as you go through it, you know, as all I did was really draw those lines and then it did all of the rest because that's what ArcSite does at the end of the day is it captures all that data in the front end. So when you draw it, it just applies it. Now, I told you I'd come back in a second to things like creating shapes and doing the good, better, best proposals. So I'm going to jump back out to the proposal piece. Actually, let me, or out of the proposal piece, but while I'm still here to send this off or to do anything with it, you just tap the little box in the top right and you can text it, you can email it, you can airdrop it to somebody, you can save it to files, put it in a Dropbox, mark it up, print it, whatever you want to do to it. So that's essentially our little export button. And then the signature tool is what's right next to it. So you saw me draw on a line er earlier, but maybe you want somebody to initial every page. You can just simply have them insert an initial and place it on every page and it'll save that right to the PDF. So allows you to capture that sort of stuff too. Now, maybe you haven't have maybe you don't have a shape you need and this comes up decently often so i want to show it it'll be super quick don't worry but maybe you draw out you know maybe you use something on your symbol that is just a uh, circle with an a in it right maybe that's a shape that you use often and i've got this a with a black background let me go in and change that just so it's easier to read you know circle with an a in it when you then select any sort of an object that you've drawn you can on the left you're going to see that toolbar yet again that pops back up you can hit create shape and you can name it whatever you want. It'll save into my shapes and you can use it infinitely forever. So you don't have to redraw it every time. Remembering size and unit will make sure it comes in at the exact same size you drew it every time you drop it in. So simple and easy to use, something I didn't want to completely raise over for you guys. But yet again, going back to the beginning, we drew those two styles of fence. One thing you can do now when you have multiple fences, you hit select and you choose both pieces. You can then hit this little present proposal options button and it'll pull them both up side by side and allow you to swipe between the two options. So you can say, hey, if you go with, you know, the uh, wood fence, Western Red Cedar, it's going to be 51, 29, 38. If you go with the vinyl, it's going to be 90, 90, 45. So you can quickly and easily show people the differences and let them choose what's best for them based on their wants, needs, budgets, um, and kind of go from there. And you can do that multiple times. It can't just be just two. It can be three, four, whatever you need it to be. But I wouldn't recommend any more than three. That would get ridiculous and the customer would get confused. But yeah, up to three, I'd say is a pretty good balance. So that's kind of the gist of some of the high level overview stuff to get started with ArcSight to get kind of your first drawing created. Now, if you're not doing good, better, best, 
you can create a drawing and you simply will just go to products to draw. You won't have to draw the lines and replace the lines with products later. You can simply go in and draw whatever fence it is that you want to draw. And then it'll spit out all the sort of fun stuff for you. Um, one thing I kind of grazed over that I just realized that is important though. What I didn't do on this drawing is I didn't end or I didn't draw the posts. I didn't drop in the posts. Wood, you don't need to because they're not pre-cut and they're not different types of posts, right? But chain link for terminal posts and then vinyl and stuff for end posts. All you're going to do with that is you're going to just going to tap on the post. It's going to drop in the same way it does with a gate and you're just going to place them where they go. So same process. You're just dropping and placing. And then again, it's going to add those and all the different pieces to it. So that way you can go in here and change out, you know, your end posts to different caps and styles and whatever it may be too. So same process with your ending corner posts. I had just realized that I did the gates earlier and not the posts. So I wanted to hit that before we ended here. So you guys weren't like, whoa, where are my posts? They have to be manually dropped in the same way as a gate. So perfect. I kind of ran right to the 30 minute mark. So if you guys have any questions, chuck them in the chat now. Um, otherwise, we can easily be reached. I'm Justin at arcsite.com. You can go right to the arcsite homepage and chat with us at any time. You can send an email to support at arcsite.com if you need any help getting set up or things like that with accounts. But if there's not any high pressing questions, that's about all I've got for you guys today. I know I flew through it at hyper speed. That's just because there's a lot to cover in 30 minutes. If it's something you want more specific time with, definitely reach out to us. We're happy to help anybody get set up at their own speed. Um, or learn what they need to learn separately as well. And like I said, we're going to continue on with this training series and just keep running through different verticals. And we're going to have deeper in-depth versions of each one as time goes to. This is kind of our first foray of jumping into more of a more of an open training session. Cool. All I'm seeing is like, thanks, great info type comments. No real questions so far. So far, so good. Um, cool. Yeah, no, I mean, like I said, just shoot me questions or hop on our website. Um, it's just arcsite.com. We have a chat bot. You can ask us questions. You can go to all the different industry pages there. Obviously, the fencing one will probably be the most visited from this meeting, but a bunch of different options for you guys. And that should about do it. I appreciate you guys all attending and let us know if we can help you out in any other way.